Hello, everyone. Dr. Robert Stanley here. Today, we just completed an over-the-shoulder case. We did an all-on X over all-on X. It was a fully guided case from NDX and sequence, so which means that the guide actually allowed us to place the implants through the guide, which is very important because we immediately provisionalized both the upper and the lower. It was a fun case. We did it as an over-the-shoulder, which means Dr. Slager came from Tennessee with his patient, and we did the case together. This is a learning opportunity for everyone, and it went really well. For the upper, it was an all-on six, and each of these in the upper, except for one of the implants, was uh, angled abutment. And as well, you may know this, but angled abutments are, are a little more challenging because if you don't get the timing just right, then you can have issues with getting your prefabricated prostheses to fit. In this case, today, everything went real well. Uh, we didn't have any issues, and the prostheses went right down with little to no adjustments whatsoever. The lower was an interesting case. Um, the patient who came today was a little older, had been without teeth for quite some time, and had a knife edge ridge on the lower. In fact, she'd been told by numerous doctors in the past that she was not a candidate for implants. When we did our digital design within sequence for the mock-up, for the workup, what we realized that the bottom one was going to be a challenging case. It didn't have a lot of bone, but we were willing to take on that risk and we said, let's try to do this. So we look, yeah, this is the prayer thing. You gotta do this as a surgeon. This is your clean space right here. You gotta keep it right here. All right. Like All right. So for today's case, the patient was sedated and we did that with the use of a CRNA that we bring in from the hospital. And the very first step is to get the patient numb. And we do that through the traditional local anesthetic, uh, PSAs, greater palatines, infiltrations. One of the nice things that we do that helps get the tissue elevated is to do hydraulic dissection. Hydraulic dissection is the use of saline solution. To, and we put a needle down at the periosteum and inject with fairly firm pressure to get the periosteum to separate from the bone. As you can see in this case here, this was necessary because the patient had been wearing a partial denture for a long time, and the tissue underneath the partial denture is typically really, really tough to get elevated. So once we completed that portion of the surgery, we were able to make a crestal incision and elevate with our Molt 9. So after we initiate the elevation of the tissues, we want to extend that elevation well up into the vestibule, almost like you were going to be doing a sinus graft. And in the anterior, in this case, we knew we needed to go up to the floor of the nose. So a landmark in the anterior was the nasal spine. Once the elevation was done, it was time to do selective extraction of particular teeth that were prescribed to us by the surgical plan. Leaving just two teeth behind in this case, we were able to seat the bone foundation guide with the monostrut. Verifying that it was seated properly, we went ahead and fixated it with our fixation pins. When you use the mallet for the fixation pins, it's just a very gentle tap. It's not a very strong strike. Now that the bone foundation guide is supported and secure, we don't need the monostrut anymore. The monostrut is simply there to carry the guide into the right position. So we pull the three plastic pins from the monostrut and set that aside. Now you can see the bone that's above the bone foundation guide as well as the remaining two teeth. We're going to verify that with our surgical plan to make sure that it looks correct. This is a check step before we continue. It looks great in this case, so now it's time to remove the remaining two teeth as well as level the bone. When we level the bone, we like to start off with gross reduction using a double action rungeur. The reason we do this is the double action rungeur provides a mechanical advantage. As you can see, we're quickly making work of this ridge and we're not disposing of this bone. We're actually going to put this bone into a bone mill, which will allow us to grind it up and use it as an autogenous graft at the end of the procedure. Once we've gotten the gross reduction down, we come in with my favorite burr of all times, my Brassler bone reduction burr. The reason I like this is the side of the burr is flat. And in this case, we want to level the bone so that it's perpendicular to the bone foundation guide. And having a flat edge on your reduction burr is really, really helpful for that. And as you can see in the video, it's making quick work of that as well. 
Once it's been verified with a slight rub of the finger that we are parallel to the top of the bone foundation guide, it's time to seat our surgical guide. And our surgical guide goes down and it gets pinned to the bone foundation guide exactly the same way that the monostrut was on there initially. So it's through the same holes, we pin that in place and you're gonna step through your regular fully guided type four surgical protocol. In this case, the BioRisons protocol has yellow and green master cylinder sleeves, which are indicating the size of our implants. And we're gonna step from the smallest drill and work our way up to the largest drill sequentially. Each one of these drills has a shoulder on it, so you cannot make an error in going too far in depth. And these drills use a guide sleeve that allows them to step through their varying diameters up until the last size. At that point, what we do is pick up the implants and we drive the implants down to position. Speed change. Speed has changed. In this case, many of the implants required timing, so great care was taken to make sure that the position of the internal hex was correct. Once that was in the right position, as verified by the blue lines on the surgical guide. We could then remove the surgical guide from the bone foundation guide. It's no longer needed. We want to verify position with a rotation jig that sits down on top of the bone foundation guide. On the and on the top of that driver, okay. there is a blue, there's oh, a line. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That line needs to line up with that blue line on the back of it. And it doesn't right It now. does not. Okay. So At this point, we can place our multi-unit abutments. Now, the multi-unit abutments have to go in in this prescribed way, which is indicated by the blue lines on the surgical guide. Once we get the multi-units in place, we do a first preliminary try of seating of the pre-made long-term provisional. And it goes down in this case with little to no adjustments. It's seated nicely. We go ahead and pin that in place. And now that it's pinned, we can go ahead and loot it. But before we loot it, we need to add the red straws. The red straws go in, they're block out straws to keep looting agent from going inside our tie copings. We loot around the buckle, once the looting agent is set up, we remove the red straws, unscrew the provisional, and then cut off the arms and clean up any flash on the back table. In this particular protocol, what we do is we do the same exact procedure again. So we have two sets of upper teeth and we'll have two sets of lower teeth. So doing it again allows us a couple of advantages. One, we have a backup set of teeth. So at any point during the healing process, the provisional breaks, we can reuse it. Or two, we have what's the starting point for our prosthodontic workup for the final teeth later on. So we capture that in the exact same protocol as previously described. And at this point, we don't need the bone foundation guide anymore. We can take that out and we can close up with some simple interrupted sutures. And I like to say, keep your sutures really loose for this because you wanna have some play in the tissue so that when you bring back the provisional, the provisional will seat onto the ridge nicely. And that's what you can see here at the end. And we've got a beautiful smile. We're going to do the exact same thing for the lower arch. What we were going for was an all on five on the bottom. So we got the three anterior implants to go in with greater than 65 Newton centimeters of primary torque, which was pretty amazing. But not to be unexpected, since we were going into D1 bone, in the back where we had planned to do two angled implants, it didn't go as planned. Those implants got knocked off the lingual bone that was really dense D1 cortical bone, and they got pushed out to the buckle despite the fact that we had a guide. So the guide constrained it, and when we took the guide cover off, we could tell that the implants didn't have the kind of stability that we wanted. We knew that it was a knife-edged uh, ridge, and it's definitely a spot that uh, a lot of dentists would say you're not a candidate for this procedure. Um, because the edge was uh, so thin. Uh, as a result, the implants didn't stick in that spot, but again, he had a solution to fix it, come back later, and we will have a good solution in the future. So what did we do? Well, it was rather simple. What we did is we did an autogenous graft from the anterior ridge that we had harvested earlier. We ground that up in our double action bone mill, our brand new one that we have, and then we were able to mix that with a little bit of 
allograft as well as a little bit of xenograft. And then we grafted both of the buccal ridges on both sides. We covered that with a mineral loss, a memlock cross-link collagen rather, uh, to keep the epithelial downgrowth from growing into our graft while it healed. And then we closed it all up with a few sutures. So what did we do in the anterior, you might ask? Well, it was fun, but what we did is we just removed the cantilevers off of each side and we delivered a, a lower six uh, unit prosthesis in the anterior. Now, the fun thing is, is that's more teeth than what she came in with. She had five lower anterior teeth and she left with six. So she gained one today. You may be wondering, what's the recovery plan for something like this? Well, this doesn't happen very often, but when we push the envelope, like today's case, it can happen. And what we do is we wait three months and we do a regular prosthesis level surgical guide. So imagine you were gonna place one implant in the distal region on both sides of the mandible and you had anterior teeth. You would make a tooth-borne, fully guided type four guide that would seat over the teeth and allow you to place the implants in the posterior. We're gonna do the exact same thing with this case, but in the anterior, we're going to use the existing provisional that she has as our teeth. So it's a nice little workaround and the subsequent surgery is rather quick and simple. It basically goes back to the onesie twosies that everybody's familiar with. An all on X over an all on X in less than four hours, first time you're doing it. Over the shoulder is a great way to do it. He was able to bring his, his assistant and having that team actually being exposed to the procedure in a controlled environment is a very, very nice opportunity. If you're interested in doing one of these over the shoulder procedures, Check us out at stanleyinstitute.com. Smile Engineer, out.